your boyfriend is Columbia's top cocaine capo, you'd better keep in shape. For eight years, Giovanna Guzman was one of the lovers of Wilbur Varela, boss of the North Valle cartel. It's like he had two faces. I saw him so tender with the ones he loved, then you see the cartel killings. He always said he was the best of friends and the worst of enemies. Nicknamed Soap, partly for his ability to give authorities the slip, Varela was a corrupt cop turned drug trafficker. He ran cocaine in go-fast boats and light aircraft to the United States and Europe and had a reputation for brutality. But he charmed Guzman with bling, bought with his ill-gotten gains. There were the vacations, the cars, and the luxury SUVs, and of course jewelry. There was always jewelry. But there were small details, too, like flowers. Guzman was a 19-year-old model. Varela told her he was a cattle rancher. She says she only found out the truth later. Varela sponsored her through the Chica Med beauty pageant. Gangsters used the contest as a shop window to pick up new girls or would buy the title as a gift for their moles. It's unclear whether Varela paid the judges, but Guzman won the crown. Of course, the luxuries don't make you fall in love, but they do dazzle you. When you get dazzled, you get carried away, but then you ask yourself, where is the love in my principles? Guzman realizes she was bought with cocaine money and she sold herself. I feel that all of us have a price. Sometimes you feel luxuries like the designer clothes, shoes and handbags are important, but afterwards you realize you're empty inside. Little by little, Varela turned Guzman into a prisoner in a golden cage. He forbade her to go on modeling shoots or to hang out with male friends. He was very jealous, and what's his is his and belongs to nobody else, and nobody can touch it, look at it, or mess with it. Even though Varela had a stable of other top model and actress girlfriends, he became so jealous of Guzman, he sent one of his henchmen to put a bullet in her. When I got shot, I was supposedly never going to walk properly again. The bullet could easily have hit me somewhere else and killed me, but I pulled myself together and said, I'm not going to be crippled. For now, Guzman won't discuss the reason for the punishment shooting. She's writing a tell-all book about a rags to narco riches story. There's a moment when you get tired of the luxuries in that fictitious world. I wanted love and to have a family, but you realize you can't have that with a drug trafficker because money is everything and they buy what they want. Ordinary Colombians seem fascinated by glamorous narco lifestyles, judging by the sky-high ratings of two TV soap operas. The cartel tells the story of the rise of the North Valle mob, which Varela headed. The sequel, called Mafia Dolls, portrays women like Guzman. There are women like me who are dazzled, but then realize money is not everything. Then there's others who will trample everyone to get what they want, whatever the cost. They know they're living in a golden cage. Guzman only dares recount her experience because Varela's now dead. The law put a $5 million bounty on him, but in the end, it was an inside job. One of his own power-hungry underlings executed him. I didn't know whether to be happy or sad. He had his good side, but my freedom doesn't have a price. I felt the golden cage had been flung open and I could fly again. Guzman says she returned all the expensive gifts shortly before Varela died. Colombia's drug squad is still investigating some of her property. She's clearly not lost her taste for luxuries, but Guzman now realizes her most valuable asset is her freedom. 
Carl Penhall, CNN, Bogota.